like share subscribe tell a friend tell a friend hit that like button right now if you can that helps the channel the most dc was popping all right man so sherelle i've been i've he i heard this term a bunch a million times at least chris what up smoke what up right but i i never really dove into it like i heard him using it this person to tell i see it in the chat all the time and i had no i didn't know what the derivative was i got some edification before i got up here right um in terms of what it is and what it was but it seems like it's used depending on the situation depending on who's talking but more importantly depending on how people feel about a person mm -hmm. it seems as though it's used more so as an insult not as a clarification yeah it's more of an insult like it's like the n-word for non-american non-black americans so, to use against other black people okay so it would be likened to the insult as like caucasians would use it towards us we use tether towards other so-called black people mm -hmm. where did it come from okay so this movie us right mm -hmm. you see the, the, the movie in the background so the movie kind of starts off with a little girl she gets trapped in the house of mirrors mm -hmm. where her shadow self traps her inside the mirror and goes to live her life right mm -hmm. in the future they go back and the other lady finds uh her other self but they had a family so every time one got pregnant the other one got pregnant and had okay. children when the other one got married the other one got came so what these other people were was was tethers so they came to the their airbnb in the middle of the night and tried to do a hostile takeover right yeah but they're identically looking just like them so the whole idea of they look like us but they not like us like they're it's like tr trying to do a hostile takeover for people just because you look like them. So you get them to, you know. Okay. Now, but okay, I understand. That, that's the movie, but it's totally different because Tether started being used as a slur from Tariq Nashi. Okay. So he originated the term? Yeah, as a, uh, yeah, as a slur. Yeah. What was his, Why? why did he do okay, that so there's a movement called ados right okay ados or ados is uh, american descendants of slavery and they're pushing the agenda to get reparations right okay so within that push there are people that are not fba right so there's a lot of people who speak against reparations but when you kind of dig in the surface of the people that are against reparations it's typically people who are from somewhere else, two generations or one generation here. And he caused the separation by founding FBA, which means foundational black Americans, which means we are, we are the foundational black Americans. We was always here. This is our land. So our fight is different than everybody else's fight. Right? So a lot of times, we keep fighting and everybody's benefiting off the backs of us fighting for our rights and then everybody's benefiting off it and that's problematic for us as foundational black americans so the other people will be considered tethers not all it's more of a word for like if you're a jamaican and you want to support black people you're not a tether. But if you're against black people, the ones that come over and say, we're lazy, we don't deserve reparations, we don't deserve this, we never accomplished anything, or talking down on us, or trying to be divisive, but while at the same time assimilating into American culture, trying to put down black Americans, would be specifically who they're calling tether. How does it work like this? So if I don't like you, you're a tether? No. If you are from another country and you're trying to stop the growth and development of Black Americans, you're a tether. <laughs> okay. And so when other Black people that come over here that essentially... So is stopping it talking down or is it specifically talking uh, against reparations? Like what? what is it? How do you make this substantive if it's so fluid? A, a black... A, a, I'm not... 
I don't say that, but it's basically it's just basically people coming over here. They look like us. They have black skin, so now everybody's black, right? But they're mm -hmm. only black when it's convenient. But we're always black. We can't not be anything other than that, right? So they're not black. I'm Dominican. I'm not black. I'm Jamaican. I'm not black. I'm Haitian. I'm not black. I'm Nigerian. I'm not black. I'm from Ghana. I'm not black. I'm from this. I'm not black. I'm that. I'm black. I'm... What are we? Black. black. Before it was cool to be black, we was black. Before mm. it was cool. So a lot of times we just can't relate to them within our struggle because they just happy to be here. We mm. still we still trying to fight. And then it's so dismissive and disrespectful when they try to say, because what they do is they try to, they try to basically compare our, our worst to their best even though they know they can't outbest us, right? So okay. black Americans have the most black billionaires. We have the, you know, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The majority of black billionaires are black Americans. We have the, the, the colleges. We have all of this, all of these accomplishments, especially even the reason why other people are able to come into the country in the way that they come through. It's our, our ancestors, our grandparents who fought in the wars, who fought the civil rights, who went through all of these different challenges and things like that, that makes America great. It's okay. our blood and sweat and tears in it. Yet you can be a visitor, right? You can be a visitor and come here and feel like you get to talk down on who built the country. So it's okay. like me going to Jamaica and, and the first year I'm in Jamaica, I'm feeling like I'm Jamaican. So I, I, I didn't have to be born here, but when I get here, I'm Jamaican. Mm-hmm. And, and all of Jamaica, and I'm looking down on Jamaicans are trying to tell them what they should do. But it's like, how are you going to leave your community and then come over here trying to help our community? We know you don't care about community because you'll be with your community, right? If you are Nigerian, why are you not in Nigeria with your community of people? We here because we ain't never we ain't never been nowhere else, which is the lie that they feed us, right? And then once you mix all of these different people that's just saying they black, who have these I'm from Africa stories, who have this I'm from another person story, it's easy to dismiss it's easy to dismiss the actual culture of what a foundational black American is. Okay. So it's almost like reaping reaping the benefits, right? And then when it's convenient, you can separate yourself from the costs that come with the benefits. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, you can down the people who essentially allowed or enabled or worked for said benefits. Mm -hmm. And you can separate from those people whenever convenient. Mm -hmm. Just like the whole concept of we're lazy, right? But it's mm -hmm. like, if you get here, okay. you get to the Lakers after the Lakers had the run and you just feel like, I'm a Lakers. You wasn't here with the chips though. You know what I'm saying? Everybody don't get a going to get a ring like that so it's like they're they're absolutely uncultured, right? They they they're unaware of what happened. And mm -hmm. I don't think it's their fault. You know what I'm saying? I'm just speaking from what my knowledge of what it is cuz when we was young, we thought everybody in Africa just needed 10 cents to feed to feed them, right? Mm -hmm. Cuz that's what was coming on the commercials. We thought everybody lived in huts and some of them do. But the indoctrination of what it's called and a lot of times people tell stories about like how when immigrants come here they're supposed to distance themselves from the black americans or they look down on us or whatever but it's like what about the fact that the government has publicly said that they you they put drugs in our community to fund the war that's okay though hmm. no matter no matter that our communities didn't shake back we're just lazy and we we didn't have the opportunity we was just lazy right Mm -hmm. redlining the fact that y'all never gave us anything the fact the, the fact that y we have cities that's fully underwater right okay where y'all 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 blew up cities where black people were successful because it was more than Tulsa Oklahoma it was it was cities that's drowned the Lake Lanier is a whole entire black city underneath the lake that they flooded so it's like all of these all of these examples of black greatness is overshadowed because we like to take our ghettos, which y'all created the ghettos, right? Because majority of these areas where the interstates are, were actually thriving black communities that they tore down and built interstates through. So when we understand the history of why our communities are in the shape of it is, 
the prison to pipeline system the they they used all of that to as excuses as if we should have just got over it but it's like yeah if we could run somewhere because jamaica ain't get over there there it's y'all got shit in y'all countries too that y'all ain't get over y'all got over on a boat or on a plane and flew somewhere else and you're happy to be here and we're still fighting for our land back we're still fighting for our rights we're still fighting we're still fighting our fight with this and this because we're trying to lift up all our people so okay, okay. like share subscribe tell a friend and tell a friend hit that like button right now if you can that helps the channel the most so coming up right especially on the east coast we all kind of grow up together and so we didn't really have a lot of differentiation like oh you jamaican i mean we know if people are jamaican Mm -hmm. but it wasn't really and we had the same jokes like y'all niggas work 10 jobs but y'all work slow as hell whatever the case is but we didn't really have a lot of dissension amongst each other except for they food was nasty you know what i'm saying like my man was jamaican he like yo my mom cooking like nah bro we ain't eating that go ahead stew shit you could keep that shit and then they be like, nigga, you eat chitlins. <laughs> you know what I mean? But but other than y'all eat chitlins it, in the north? Yeah. Um, and so it just it it wasn't that deep, like it wasn't rooted in like uh oh, y'all talking down on us. It was like everybody's black here, right? And then you know, but you understand, like you from your 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 mom from over there, you know what I mean? But it wasn't like, oh, you Jamaicans, like, oh, you black, but you your your parents from over there. Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying now to be fair we didn't have a lot of african people it was just mostly black caribbean latino mm -hmm. and latino like dominican puerto rico like that type you know what i mean and um we all just be i remember i had this girl she came to visit right she came to the barbershop with me and when we left the barbershop she was like wait a minute so everybody in the barbershop together you know black hispanics in the barbershop together and i'm like yeah but coming from the south she's like i never seen this shit before because it's, it's so segregated you know what i mean yeah like in in new orleans is very black and white um mm -hmm. new orleans mississippi alabama georgia very black and white mm -hmm. not a lot of latino um texas black and latino not a lot of white the white people kind of where they at you know my mm -hmm. niece still my niece goes to school right now mm -hmm. no white people in her school Mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't graduate with one white person in my class at all. Mm -hmm. We had one Mexican boy. Mm -hmm. Um so down here it's it's we never saw it as an issue either. You know what I'm saying? I think after the storm we started kind of getting uh some Guatemalan people. Yeah. With dark skin, but they didn't speak English, so we kind of knew they wasn't black yeah. by the accents, right? Or whatever. No. And they kind of stick to themselves. They'll be more with the Latinos than they hang with regular black people okay because they identify with the culture right essentially yeah yeah so they're more based like when you ask black people who are not well melanated people anyway dark-skinned people who are mm -hmm. not from america like what are you they'll let you know their nationality they're more about their nationality than they are about their skin color until mm -hmm. it's convenient till somebody telling them you're not black okay i, I see damn so because it, it it feels and i'm saying feels right as i'm learning about it because like i said i heard the term a million times i never thought to kind of think through it you know what i mean mm -hmm. but it feels more divisive than necessary what do you think um i think so mm. like and so I, let me I, let me, I, let me I, reframe I, the I, question I, let me reframe it so there's terminology that you need so people can understand where they stand right so let's i'm looking at the term tether i could see how it can bring clarification right but i don't think it bringing clarification outweighs the potential harm it can do what do you think you see what i'm saying you see what i'm asking um i don't know it's like let's say you and your wife are having a family discussion right sure and i'm over there and i'm trying to tell y'all what to do at mm -hmm. some point you're gonna be like this you're an outsider whatever we're handling it's an in-house mm -hmm. problem so i think a lot of times when people say tether it's because we're having a us conversation and then somebody from the outside looking in think they have a better 
solution or opinion oh, okay. without knowing all the details of it okay so at that so okay so in that at that juncture right let's say we like take that walk right there right if so if we having a conversation about things that you can only empathize with you can't sympathize with you never experienced it right and mm -hmm. you don't have the um necessary information or you you don't have the cultural aspects that are needed to give proper context it would behoove you to come in and listen mm -hmm. as opposed to start giving instruction at that point i would say listen okay as a tether you just want to come in and consume the information first but i'm not trying to use it as derogatory i'm trying to say hey this is the placement because you're still learning before you talk right i could see how it could work there you see what i mean right and like, then it it's always going to be like an issue or so let's just say me and you mm -hmm. have a conversation about god if me and you having a conversation about god mm -hmm. it's not as it's, it's not a it's not an atheist or a non-believers yeah point to come because all they're yeah. going to do is bring contention when we're trying to build up on this and they don't even believe in this okay so it's like if me and you as as, as foundational black americans are trying to build with which in, you understand that we need we have a lot of building to do we have a lot like we're not gonna we're not gonna make it seem like mm. my my dad my dad lived through segregation you know what i'm saying we're not too mm. far removed from the, the bullshit that we was going through in this country our grandparents were suffering every all the worst things mm -hmm. so because we understand that we're having a different conversation mm -hmm. so somebody so when we're having a conversation about how america needs policies and the things about it is they're like oh you're complaining what the f are we not out of slavery did, are we did we not handle the, the bus or did we not do desegregation did we not do the civil rights did all of this complaining and marching and working did it not get us in advancement hell yeah hmm. hell yeah it advanced us so now they're trying to tell us what we're doing isn't enough but it's been working for us right us never us not stop fighting and continuously pushing the pushing the limits to make sure that black americans get our just due out of this country because we built this country and it's our country we're not from africa so at the end of the day we we need to continue that fight for our people the liberation of our people so if we're in that consistent fight and then you have people with the same color skin as us coming over here and they just happy to be here you're happy to be here. America is your dream. America is your promised land, but it's our land. That you're coming over here trying to have a good life, which nobody says that. You know what I'm saying? We get it. Okay. We get that America is great. You know what I'm saying? But it's a it's a it's a clear separation that needs to be handled because when you when you allow people to infiltrate your your system who don't mm -hmm. even have the benefits of it, they can tear it apart. Okay, I understand your point. What do you think about the pushback argument of white people can't tell the difference? They get treated the same as us. What do you think? It don't matter. Why not? Because if, if a white person that couldn't tell the difference between an apple and an orange, it wouldn't change the fact that an apple is an apple and an orange is an orange. Mm, why, are but, we let, why are we letting them dictate who we are? Well, I guess that even though they would understand the apples still, they can... Let me see. Let me see how I can respond to that appropriately. But if they can't discern the difference and they treat them the same, the difference is inconsequential. But why are we why are we going to allow how somebody else treats us or how somebody else looks at us negate the fact of who we are? We're okay. the we're the yeah. They're gonna treat us the same and block us block us in the same. That's the problem. We're the ones who have claims to the land. Hmm. So we're we're the we're the ones who are owed reparations. We are the ones who are owed. We're our families are the ones who fought in the war. It is problematic to group us all in because do you feel like people who just got here uh, uh last year, the first generations, mm -hmm. deserve people deserve what people who have always been here deserve? in terms of reparations no but i think that they would agree to that too right like they would know Some if, if you know. Sec i think Some the majority would say if i'm second generation 
or if my people don't come from this land specifically i don't i wouldn't get reparations i don't see them being like i should get reparations you do no they are that's the ados versus fda movement because a lot of the ADO, ados people are not foundational black americans i thought they were american descendants of slaves yeah which includes the entire caribbean get it mm. because the caribbean uh, dominicans are Americans. descendants of slaves yeah they're, yeah, okay. they're also american oh okay i see the slaves. differentiation so yeah another mm -hmm. another divide another divide <laughs> let me so okay let me so these are a couple of things i was looking at Cheryl, right like share subscribe tell a friend to tell a friend hit that like button right now if you can that helps the channel the most